Today we're going to talk about aviation weather services and weather briefings. Before every flight, you should obtain a weather briefing. The best source for this information is your flight service station. You can also call 1-800-WX-BRIEF, B-R-I-E-F. Another tool called the Graphical Forecast for Aviation, or GFA, is located at aviationweather.gov slash GFA. Aviation routine weather reports, there are two types of these reports. METARs, which are routine weather observations. SPECI, which is a non-routine weather report. Each of these two reports is a direct observation of the weather at the time noted on the report. A terminal aerodome forecast is a forecast at the time of the report valid for the area within five statute miles of the airport. You will most likely be asked to interpret the raw weather data on your check ride. A weather report will contain, in order, the ICAO identifier, which is the airport, the date and time, winds, visibility, weather phenomena, sky conditions, or the ceiling, remarks, temperature slash dew point, and the altimeter setting to use. So once again, on the weather report, in the raw form, it's going to go in order, the ICAO identifier of the airport, the date and time, winds, visibility, weather phenomena, sky conditions slash ceiling, remarks, temperature dew point, and altimeter setting. When asking for a weather briefing, identify yourself, your intended route and destination, your type of aircraft, visual or instrument, and expected departure time. A standard briefing should be obtained two hours before each flight. An abbreviated briefing is more limited and can update a prior briefing. An outlook briefing goes more than six hours, so that's more for like the next day. So before each flight, check your standard briefing. Um, and if it's closer to um, time to depart, you can check an abbreviated briefing. All right, sorry for that break there, but I'm kind of going to go over um, some of the brief descriptors for what you would see in a briefing. Uh, if you see a negative, it means light. If there's nothing there, it would be, for intensity-wise, moderate. If you see a plus, heavy. VC means in the vicinity. Uh, other descriptors are MI, which means shallow, BC, patches, DR, low drifting, BL, blowing, SH, showers, TS, thunderstorms, that one's pretty easy, FZ, freezing, PR, partial. For precipitation, you'll see DZ, which means drizzle, RA, rain, SN, snow, SG, snow grains, IC, ice crystals, PL, ice pellets, GR, hail, GS, small hail, or UP, which is unknown precipitation. For obscurations, BR means mist, FG is fog, FU, smoke, DU, dust, SA, sand, HZ, haze, PY, spray, or VA, volcanic ash. Others you might encounter are PO, which is dust or sand, SQ, squalls, FC, funnel clouds, or tornadoes, or a plus FC, which is a tornado, SS, sandstorm, or DS, dust storm. Uh, for your in-flight weather, your flight service station provides real-time weather conditions on usually on 122.2, uh, which is universal and often congested uh, frequency. The in-route flight advisory service called Flight Watch is on 122.0 and offers specific weather services. So. Real-time weather conditions is usually 122.2, and flight watch is on 122.0. Uh, significant weather uh, charts are prog charts and are fantastic plane tools for cross-country flights. 
They provide forecasts of expected weather events such as rain, ice, snow, and thunderstorms, as well as expected ceilings, visibility, and turbulence. They cover the U.S entire United States and are not a substitute for local METARs and TAFs. So you would really want to check this for an overview, not for specific uh, information where you're flying. Uh, if you see a red circle, that means the ceiling is less than 10,000 feet and visibility is less than three miles. If you see a blue line, which looks like a cloud, it's a ceiling 10,000 to 1,000 to 3,000 feet inclusive and or visibility three to five miles. If you see a dotted yellow line, it means moderate or greater turbulence. Dashed light blue is freezing level above MSL. If you see a squiggly blue, freezing level at the surface. Uh, for wind and temperatures aloft, wind and temperature aloft forecasts provide wind and temperature forecasts for specific locations throughout the United States including network locations in Hawaii and Alaska. There are six numbers. The first two give the true direction. The next two give the velocity in knots. The final two is the temperature in Celsius. One study found that weather was a cause or contributing factor in 35% of fatal general aviation accidents, of which 60% occurred while instrument meteorological conditions were present. However, the long-term trend on weather related accidents is good, likely due to better communication technology. Now we can go through um, pilot reports, which is PIREPS. PIREPS provide valuable information regarding the conditions as they actually exist in the air, which cannot be gathered away from any other source. Pilots can confirm the height of bases and tops of clouds, locations of wind shear and turbulence, and the location and severity of in-flight icing. If the ceiling is below 5,000 feet or visibility is at or below five miles, ATC facilities are required to solicit PIREPs from pilots in the area. So TAF, which is a Terminal Aerodome Forecast, a TAF is a report established for the five statute mile radius around an airport. TAF reports are usually available for larger airports. If the same coding, it uses the same coding as a regular METAR. Only cumulonimbus clouds are forecast in a TAF through ceiling, though ceilings are included. Weather advisories, in-flight weather advisories, which are provided to an en route aircraft, are reports that detail potentially hazardous weather. These advisories are also available to pilots prior to departure for flight planning purposes. An in-flight weather advisory is issued in the form of either an airmet, sigmet, or convective sigmet. Hazardous in-flight weather advisories, HIWAS, H-I-W-A-S, kind of a hard one, are continuous broadcasts of hazardous weather on the voice capability of select VORs. It is identified by an H in the VOR box on the sectional. An airmet, includes a forecast of moderate icing, moderate turbulence, sustained surface wing winds of 30 knots or greater, widespread areas of ceilings less than 1,000 feet, and or visibilities less than three miles, and extensive mountain obscuration. They're labeled Sierra, Tango, and Zulu for IFR, turbulence and icing respectively. Sigmets. SIGMETs are in-flight advisories concerning non-convective weather that is potentially hazardous to all aircraft. The where, the report, they report weather forecasts that include severe icing not associated with thunderstorms, severe or extreme turbulence, or clear air turbulence not associated with thunderstorms, dust storms, or sandstorms that lower surface or in-flight visibilities to below three miles and volcanic ash. Uh, just so you know, SIGMET means significant meteorological, um, I forgot what the T part stands for, but I'll have to look that up. Turbulence. Uh, convective SIGMET. A convective SIGMET is an in-flight weather advisory issued for hazardous convective weather that affects the safety of every flight. Convective SIGMETs are issued for severe thunderstorms with, the sur with surface winds greater than 50 knots. Hail the surface greater than or equal to three quarters of an inch in diameter or tornadoes. They are also issued to advise pilots 
of embedded thunderstorms, lines of thunderstorms, or thunderstorms with heavy or greater precipitation that affect 40% or more of a 3,000 square foot mile or greater region.